You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen, explaining the possibilities in your love life and examining your mantourage dating experiences. I am here to help you do life and love on your terms by tipping the scales of love permanently in your favor. So don't forget to text this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends and let's get started. Hello, single smart female. It's your romantic fairy godmama. And today we have a romantic fairy godmama quickie. Now, today's quickie is a fun quickie. In fact, it's dating terms to know. Now, before I even get started, honestly, I really don't give a shit about dating terms. The only reason I have any interest in dating terms at this point, I don't really use a ton of dating terms. If you haven't noticed, if you've been listening to Single Smart Female for a while, I don't use a lot of current dating terms for multiple reasons. The primary reason is because I know that mantourage dating itself is timeless. And I try not to, I do have a few terms, mantourage, one of them, mantourage dating, another term, things like that. I have a few things for general themes, but the Excessiveness of dating terms is just a way to categorize things, and it's usually in negative categories. So when I went to actually do some Google research, by the way, the other reason that I do have any interest in dating terms at all is because my teenage kiddo loves to tell me about their dating life, and well, I had to figure out exactly what my kiddo was talking about. So that was another reason I had to start looking up some of these terms. And I did find them a little interesting just so I could keep up with the conversation. But otherwise, I really don't have any interest. There's a few terms I like here and there because to me, they're just fun. But again, overall, this is just very fun. It's not a necessary theme. And sometimes I think we use it to disqualify a lot of men and things like that. We use these terms as in frequency to talk poorly about how things are not going the way that we want them to. But with that said, I'm going to use them to make them fun. We're going to talk about them today. They are good to know, especially if you have kiddos, teenagers, 20s and stuff that are going through this because this is the common terminology right now. And of course, like all language, it's evolving and will evolve. There are a few that have been, you know, running the circuit for a while now. but. Like I said, mantrage dating to me is timeless. You don't need terms in order to do it. You don't need terms in order to understand it. It's really specific to themes. And again, we're just doing this for fun. So with that said, let's go through some of these terms. The one that I hear the most often, this one's actually been around for a bit, is ghosting, which is somebody's sudden disappearance. Now, I even found out that there's the category off of ghosting that's called caspering. So ghosting basically is when it's somebody disappears and you don't know why. Caspering, on the other hand, supposedly is when somebody lets you know that they're going to disappear, basically, and that they're not interested or whatnot, and then they just disappear. So ghosting, which I do use this term sometimes because it's so, so prevalent these days, ghosting is not the same as being stood up, which I hear a lot of women say that they use ghosting interchangeably with being stood up. It's not exactly the same. And also stood up is not the same as not hearing from somebody either. Stood up in my world is where you actually show up to a date. You're actually there. You're physically there. And the guy does not show up. And that is a term that I do like to use because there is a difference. There's an energy difference. So we use that in secret society. Ghosting I use here and there. But in my world, in the mantraj dating world, the adored woman world, ghosting, we realize that men cycle sometimes. So you might hear from him very, very, very regularly, and then you won't hear from him for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, he'll cycle back in. A lot of women, when they use the term ghosting, they say it from a place where they know definitively that he is going to disappear. And a lot of times when you're really enjoying your mantraj, Certain guys will cycle. So somebody you thought you'd never hear from again, all of a sudden pops up. And even my kiddo was telling me the other day about an experience and that how much fun that experience was and that the person that she was talking to all of a sudden contacted her. And I said, yes, yes, because 
that is a lot of times what happens when you're having so much fun. Now, I want you to understand that bantaraj dating specifically, it's a lifestyle. And men do have this radar, this specific radar. They don't know that they have this radar. Most women don't even realize that they have this radar, but they have a radar, especially when you're having fun with another man. Now, it has to be genuine fun. It can't be fake fun. And it can't be something that you're trying to orchestrate so that you can get his attention. But when you are genuinely having fun with another man, his radar goes off, which is a lot of times while you'll be on this great date and you're having so much fun, and all of a sudden you'll start hearing from the other guy as well. Okay? So, ghosting is where we started with that. Now, next one is breadcrumbing, which I thought was interesting, which is basically somebody just kind of giving you crumbs to hang on. By the way, a lot of this terminology is very, very similar, so I'm not going to give you all the different renditions of the different variations of each word because it's just so similar, and it's just like sometimes we need to overprocess things. And to be honest, when you overanalyze things, a lot of times you suck the fun out of it, which is why women really have so much trouble with dating is because they're trying to analyze the shit out of it all the time when instead they should just be focused on having fun, becoming an adored woman who enjoys almost every date that she goes out on. Okay, so breadcrumbing. Very interesting. It's when somebody just gives you just barely enough to keep you interested. Love bombing. By the way, a lot of these terms too, I've found they imply that there's an intention on the person that's doing it. And sometimes there is, but a lot of times they're not. The person's doing it on purpose. Breadcrumbing a lot of times just means that his interest isn't super high in you quite yet, which can shift. Nobody will tell you that, but it can shift. And especially when you're having a lot of fun with other men and all of a sudden just something clicks and then he can't stop thinking about you and then all of a sudden his interest is really high. Okay, next is love bombing. This one I thought was interesting too. And this basically is when somebody comes in and they're just like all up in your business and your life and they're so affectionate and so loving and so amazing. And then it just all stops. It's like a hyper honeymoon phase when they first meet you. Hyper honeymoon phase. The honeymoon phase is when everything is just like flowers and roses and unicorns and kisses and it just he's so enamored with you and so fascinated by you and then all of a sudden it just it's gone either he disappears or it's just gone and he acts completely indifferent towards you so this one I actually think has some validity to it a lot of women don't know how to handle the honeymoon phase and sometimes there are men that do that but when you're mantraj dating you don't really have to worry about the love bombing as much because you have a place to focus your attention if it wanes and then it can recycle or if that guy is genuinely a love bomber and that's just who he is, which is not something in my world that we experience a lot. We don't run into it very much at all. Anyway, so it's mediated a lot better through mantraj dating, so it's not really a problem. But it is something that definitely exists. Now, there's a world word called zombieing. Zombieing has something to do, and I'm going to mess up the definition on it because a lot of these words I don't use, remember. Zombieing has to do with kind of the resurgence and somebody talking to you after they've ghosted you. And I have to be honest, if you're recounting stuff to your girlfriend and you're analyzing from, well, hey, you know, he ghosted me and now he's zombieing me. I'm hearing from him this, and it must mean this, and it must mean this. One of the things that you learn in mantraj dating is it's not what it means for him. It's really what it means for you. And so that's where that overanalyzation, even though these words are fun in nature, that overanalyzation really fucks with your head when it comes to standing in who you are as an adored woman, meaning it puts your focus on the wrong stuff. It doesn't put your focus where it needs to be so that you can create the love life that you want through your encounters and your mantraj dating lifestyle. Next is cuffing season. Now this one's been around for a long time. Cuffing season is usually colder seasons, holidays, things like that, where people like to pair up because they like to snuggle, they like the affection. It's not like the summertime where it's hot and, you know, sticky and sweaty. This is more of a touchy-feely season. And 
a lot of people go into cuffing season craving companionship, craving, pair bonding, craving, all that good stuff. And, and then they don't know how to foster it. So when the intensity starts to wear off, they don't know what to do with it. And then things kind of fall apart. But cuffing season, especially if you get really sad and you feel lonely around Christmas time, holiday time, things like that, this has something to do with just that natural craving of physical companionship during that timeline. Now, let's see. What are some of these other fun terms? Okay, okay. I totally confess, as a middle-aged woman, a middle-aged hot romantic fairy godmama, a lot of these terms I would never use. Well, I might use them just for fun, but it is hilarious listening to the younger generation use these terms. Again, I already mentioned Caspering. The other one is thirst trap. So apparently this is a photo that people send, and I know all women do it of all ages, but it has a term for it. It's basically a sexy photo, whether you're showing your cleavage. My favorite, especially in the younger crowd, is the facial expression, that sexually provocative, I want you to want me pose and using images in order to convey that. But that is what is called a thirst trap. Now, another one that's been around for a while okay, is gaslighting. And I know you've all heard the word gaslighting. This is one that I use. I think I've used it. I don't know if it's frequent or not, but I've used it definitely a time or two on single smart female. It may be actually more than just a time or two. But gaslighting is the act of somebody, like you know something is true and somebody making you feel stupid or like that it's not reality. It didn't happen and you're kind of crazy for believing that. Gaslighters usually show their hands in the beginning of a relationship. You're able to see it when you're man dating. It's a lot, lot easier to see. What women mostly do is where they pursue one guy that they've got a lot of chemistry for, and they hope and pray and pray and hope that it's going to work out. And they try, you know, try to figure him out and they spend months doing it. And all of a sudden it comes crashing down. Well, In that scenario, gaslighter is a lot harder to spot because you've got all your attention and focus on this one person. And so you wear these rose-colored glasses around them that makes it very challenging for you to pick up on actual gaslighting because you want him to be your knight in shining armor. So it's actually very important to learn how to mantourage date properly so that you avoid those kind of serious situations. Now, I think they're funny, especially, again, with teenagers. And I know lots of women are using this over different decades, but I like the teenage and the 20s and stuff when you have a talking stage where you're just talking to somebody. You have a situationship where that is, there's something going on between the two of you. And I think there's probably some overlap between situationship and talking stage. And then you get into relationship and then just all these different levels. And it's just really funny to see all these different levels. I like to keep things really simple. Why do I like to keep things really simple? Because as you get older, there's enough complication in the world. There is mantourage dating is really beautiful. But if you keep it simple, it's a lot more fun. You're dating somebody, which means you're actively going out on a date. You might be like a little bit pre-dating where you're talking to them, but you're talking, dating in a relationship. That's it. (laughs) That's it. We keep it super simple. I think all these different stages, I like the fun words around them, but I don't think that they're actually necessary. And I don't necessarily think that they're helpful towards really giving you better experiences in love. I like to keep it super simple. Okay. The, The different flag colors. So apparently there are green flags, there are red flags, there are beige flags. These make me literally laugh out loud. Green flags are good signs. Okay. I know you all know that. Red flags are bad signs. And by the way, you definitely should listen to my podcast on red flags because my red flags are a little different than society's red flags and things that you really need to actually look out for. My favorite here is the beige flags, which is, it's a flag, but you don't know what it means. You don't know if it's good or bad. (laughs) That, That literally is like, well, I want there to be a problem, but I'm not sure. But maybe it's good, and I don't, 
that's just like a clusterfuck in your head. I mean, the way we process things as a society sometimes really, really cracks me up. But it definitely makes for interesting things. And ladies, I want you to have fun in dating. Like, that's my ultimate goal for you. I actually prefer if you keep it simple because I think there's enough to keep up with in life. I mean, there's enough when you're a teenager. There's enough when you are in your 20s. But especially as you really start stepping into ownership and career and children and things in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s and up, there's so much to tend to at the same time. Don't make your dating life overly complicated. Yes, there is some upfront learning, some front loading in mantourage dating, but it's a lifestyle. It's a way of being. It's not a constant analysis of men. It's more about learning about yourself in reference to men because men are amazing. Men are wonderful. There's so many amazing things about men, but you're the real catch. You're the real prize. And I really, really don't want you to overcomplicate this process. Now, to learn how to mantourage date properly, to start that process with me, go get a free three-day class at mantouragedating.com. If you're wondering how to spell mantourage, it's man, M-A-N, tour, T-O-U-R-A-G-E, dating.com. Hey, lover girl. Thanks for joining me today and texting this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends. If you have a question that you'd like to submit for on-air consideration or want to learn more about working with me, then meet me over at singlesmartfemale.com. See you there.